As paleontology progresses, and scientists gain access to new methods of unlocking prehistoric secrets, we tend to find that dinosaurs were much stranger than we once thought. They were much more than reptiles as we know them today. Some were feathered, some were covered in bright patterns and display features, others were semi-aquatic, and certain species could climb trees or glide. There is, however, one group of dinosaurs who have been bizarre from the very start, and who don't appear to be slowing down in amazing paleontologists across the world. These are the Therozinosaurs. The most famous member of the Therozinosaur clade is, as you might expect, Therozinosaurus. This unusual herbivorous theropod, built more like a giant ground sloth than a Tyrannosaurus, has baffled scientists for years, and some elements of its biology continue to elude them today. With a long neck, giant claws, short legs and a stubby tail, this was one of the true oddities of the late Cretaceous period, and shows just how derived and adapted some species of dinosaurs had come to be by the time they went extinct. Today we will be coming face to face with Therizinosaurus, unraveling the mysteries of its history and biology, before taking a look at just what those claws might have been used for. Sit back and relax, as we take you back in time to the late Cretaceous Mongolia, to meet one of the strangest dinosaurs ever to have lived. When you picture the word dinosaur, what is it that comes to mind? Perhaps it's a ferocious carnivorous theropod, a long-necked sauropod, or the tall dorsal plates of a stegosaurid. What might not come to mind is what, to the untrained eye, appears to be a gigantic goose with three-foot-long claws. But that, in a nutshell, is what Therizinosaurus resembled. It looks extremely fearsome, and even enjoyed some brief screen time in Jurassic World Dominion as a hyper-aggressive movie monster. But in reality, Therizinosaurus was a herbivore. Despite the claws, despite the size, and despite the way it was portrayed in the movie, this bipedal theropod did not, like its cousins, kill and eat other animals. But that's just scratching the surface. In reality, the oddities of this dinosaur go much, much deeper. Therizinosaurus was truly enormous. Size estimates based on the animal's fossils give it a length of between 9 and 10 meters, or 30 to 33 feet long, and a height of between 4 and 5 meters, or 13 to 16 feet tall. Estimations of weight tend to average out at around 5 tons, that's just shy of the maximum weight of an adult African elephant. Therizinosaurus was a Maniraptoron theropod, a member of a clade that also includes the Dromaeosaurids, Trudontids, Oviraptorids, and Avialans, also known as birds. For a Maniraptoron, who were typically small, nimble carnivores, Therizinosaurus was colossal. Of the group, Therizinosaurus is firmly the largest member, and even though fossil content is not complete, the sheer size of this animal can clearly be seen in its remains. Therizinosaurus is reconstructed in modern illustrations and papers as having a deep, bulky torso, where most of its weight would have been centered. Its tail was relatively short and stubby for its size, while the neck, which curved upwards, would have been unusually long for a theropod, giving it an uncanny prosauropod appearance. The skull was relatively small when compared to the animal's wider body, and its long snout was tipped with a beak, again, not a common occurrence in theropods. The legs, while powerful, were also comparatively short, and would have supported the animal's weight efficiently with four digits, and a backwards-facing dew claw. What really makes these giants stand out, however, is the mighty four claws. 
Therizinosaurus's arms were long and powerful, and were tipped in hands that were armed with the longest claws of any terrestrial animal that has ever lived. Most Therizinosaurids had elongated foreclaws to an extent, but in Therizinosaurus, these were taken to the next level entirely. Sharp and robust, these claws would become the focal point of the dinosaur in popular media, and to this day give it a unique appearance that sets it apart from almost every other dinosaur in the fossil record. Therizinosaurus's arms were around 2.5 meters or 8 feet long each, and the claws measured a little over 1 meter or 3.3 feet in length. Like other Manoraptorons, Therizinosaurus is often depicted with a layer of feathers, which may have covered its entire body. While early representations of the animal were shown as featherless, in reality, these feathers may have insulated the animal and provided a means of display or communication to members of the same species. While no fossilized remains have been found that directly indicate a presence of feathers on the animal's body, remains of its close relatives, such as the Therizinosaur Bapiosaurus, have been unearthed which show the telltale barbs of long, robust filamentous feathers on the dinosaur's arms. Therizinosaurus's remains were discovered for the first time off the back of an expedition organized by the USSR Academy of Sciences, which saw paleontologists take to the Nemegt formation within the Mongolian Gobi Desert to search for a new species of long-lost Cretaceous animals. The expedition proved fruitful, and scientists were soon in the possession of numerous new species of dinosaur, mammal, and turtle. One find soon stood out from the others, however. Evgeny Maliev, studying the find in 1954, was shocked to the present of what seemed to be gigantic cutting tools amidst the fragments of arms and ribs. While these would later prove to be the dinosaur's immense foreclaws, Maliev did not immediately recognize them as such. He gave the animal the scientific name that still stands today. Therizinosaurus chiloniformis, which roughly translates from Greek to scythe lizard that resembles a turtle. That species name, chiloniformis, and the reference to turtles, was given as Maliev thought he was looking at the remains of a gigantic, semi-aquatic shelled creature. The claws, he believed, were part of the animal's flippers, and that if it wasn't a turtle itself, it surely must have looked a lot like one. He suggested that the entire animal would measure roughly 4.5 meters or 15 feet long, and would have used its claws whilst diving to scrape up seaweed and other aquatic plants from the sea floor to eat. Russian paleontologist Anatoly K. Rozhdostsensky, re-examining the find in 1970, disagreed, however. He compared the general form of Therizinosaurus's claws with those of Chilantisaurus, a large carnivorous theropod dinosaur from the late Cretaceous in China. He rejected Maliv's turtle hypothesis and claimed that Therizinosaurus was itself a theropod. This was then supported by Polish paleontologist Halszka Osmolska that very same year, when he was looking at the equally enigmatic Dinochirus, a gigantic ornithomimosaur that was known initially only from its arms. Over time, however, an even clearer picture of the animal would be produced as more and more fossils attributed to the species were discovered. A much more complete set of arms was discovered in 1973, with additional ribs that gave scientists an indication of the size and shape of the animal's body. Later that year, a joint expedition between Mongolian and Soviet paleontologists would yield elements of the dinosaur's legs and hind digits. Over time, up to the 2000s and 2010s, Therizinosaurus's body plan and appearance became more and more clear to scientists as further studies were undertaken. Scientists were soon able to discern 
that this was a heavily built, robust animal that held itself in a tall, upright stature as it walked. Fossil material attributed to the very closely related dinosaur Segnosaurus towards the end of the 1970s and beyond helped scientists to get a better understanding of Therizinosaurus's wider body as elements of the former's vertebrae and skull were unearthed. All of this came together to form the huge, unusual ground sloth-like animal that we know of today. Despite the unique morphology of this dinosaur, scientists have had a difficult time pinning down exactly how Therizinosaurus lived its life. Its beak and teeth indicate that it was a plant eater despite its theropod ancestry, and given its long neck, it likely browsed from trees and shrubs in the regions in which it lived. Therizinosaurus is an extreme example of convergent evolution, where two or more groups of unrelated animals evolve the same features to exploit a similar ecological niche. In this specific case, Therizinosaurus convergently evolved features belonging to not only the ground sloths, but also the Calicotheres, a group of bizarre hoofed mammals related to horses, whose long arms help them to pull down branches from the trees. To a certain extent, Therizinosaurus has also convergently evolved features with modern bears, who are known to favour herbivorous diets in some species. Like the Calicotheres, scientists have suggested, based on the animal's lower bone structure, that while Therizinosaurus was feeding, it would have sat for extended periods of time while obtaining food. Sitting down next to a particularly large shrub or tree would have allowed the animal to save energy as it ate. When it needed to get up, the animal's long arms would have helped it to rise before it ambled off into the woods to secure a new feeding spot. It has also been theorised that unlike the Calicotheres, who had a greater degree of muscle and intelligence than Therizinosaurus, the latter may have been a slightly messier eater, unable to precisely target particular twigs or clumps of vegetation. The precise function of Therizinosaur's claws has long since been the topic of debate amongst paleontologists. When Rozdostvensky first determined that Therizinosaurus was a dinosaur in 1970, he suggested that the claws may have been used to help the animal to break into termite mounds or into anthills, or that they may have been used to pluck fruits and nuts from trees. Later theories stated that the claws may have been used to help the animal dig into the earth for food, but doubt has been cast on this idea when it was determined that the claws were relatively fragile upon impact. For years since then, the running theory first put forward by Lev A. Nesov in 1995 was that these giant claws must have been defensive tools. It soon became a very charismatic representation of the Mesozoic an unusual dinosaur that was just beginning to gain public notoriety, slashing at the giant theropods that may have wished to hunt it with meter-long claws, causing immense bleeding damage. This appeared on the documentary Chased by Dinosaurs, a Walking with Dinosaurs spin-off program aired by the BBC featuring zoologist Nigel Marvin. A scene towards the climax of the episode showed a huge, featherless Therizinosaurus slashing the face of a hungry Tarbosaurus as it defended itself from predation. Over time, it appears as though this too may not have been the case, however. Much to the disappointment of Walking with Dinosaurs fans everywhere, a test undertaken in 2014 to test the strength of Therizinosaurus's claws in several different scenarios, showed that, due to the length and curvature, they may have had a hard time piercing the skin of an attacking predator. Digging, slashing at threats, and fighting members of the same species would have put a great amount of stress on the claws, and therefore it would have put a great amount of risk on the dinosaur's health and life if it ever was to break them. 
It was suggested then that perhaps Therizinosaurus used its claws to hook and pull branches towards its mouth that were otherwise difficult for the creature to reach. This kind of action would not have created much stress on the claws and would directly help the animal go about its daily efforts to forage and feed. This isn't the end of the story however. Scientists have still not settled on one exact reason as to why this dinosaur boasted such elaborate claws on its forearms. Scott A. Lee and Zachary Richards in another 2018 study on the resistance of dinosaur limbs showed that Therizinosaurus arms, if not their claws, were indeed resistant to impact and stress. They suggested that some Therizinosaurus may have used their claws as weapons, but others may have utilised them as feeding tools or for display purposes. Until further material is discovered that points one way or another, this mystery may go unsolved for the time being. Therizinosaurus was a resident of the Nemenkt Formation in what is today southwest Mongolia. Today, the region is part of the scorching Gobi Desert, but 70 million years ago, when Therizinosaurus walked the earth, it may have looked much more similar to subtropical Africa, with regions such as the Okavango Delta in Botswana potentially providing a modern analogue to this dinosaur's homeland. Therizinosaurus lived in a densely wooded floodplain that was segmented by rich river systems. Conifers would have dominated the landscape, providing shelter for many species of dinosaur, reptile and mammal, and seasonal monsoons would have drastically altered the landscape. It was generally a temperate region, but summers and winters would have fluctuated from hot and humid to cold and dry. It is thought that when the monsoons came, dinosaurs from Mongolia's drier desert regions, such as the barren Goyot Formation, may have migrated to the Nemegt Formation to find food and water. The Nemegt Formation was full of dinosaur life and harboured many genera that have found themselves as the rising stars of the new age of paleontology which we find ourselves in today thanks to documentaries such as Prehistoric Planet and the constant flow of paleo art that shows dinosaurs in up-to-date settings. Theropods of Nemegd included the tiny anteater-like Mononychus, the famous Ornithomimid Gallimimus and the apex predator Tyrannosaurid Tarbosaurus, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Oviraptorosaurs, Dromaeosaurs, Pachycephalosaurids, Hadrosaurids and Titanosaurs were all common here, and Nemegd is one of the most dinosaur-rich formations of the late Cretaceous. Some dinosaurs, such as the convergently similar Dinochirus, may have competed with Therizinosaurus for resources, while large Tyrannosaurids may have posed a threat to unwary or young individuals. The riverine environments in which Therizinosaurus lived were full of aquatic life too, and fish, turtles, crocodilomorphs and birds would have all been a common sight. To see Therizinosaurus depicted in paleoart is to glimpse into a world vastly unlike our own, where outlandish animals make the most of forests teeming with life. It is an animal that feels enigmatic and yet strangely familiar, given the convergent evolution which it shares with other animals in the fossil record, and we are likely close to scientists being able to determine exactly what the function of those gigantic claws were once and for all. With the constant streams of discoveries and the new age of dinosaur study which we find ourselves in today, who knows what we might discover about this ambling forest titan over the next several years.